Welcome to this week's Short Clip Friday podcast. On Fridays, I will be posting clips from previous episodes. And the point here is just to bring you some of the highest yield topics from each podcast in order to kind of reinforce those topics. This podcast covers periodic trends and is from the Atomic Chemistry podcast. Enjoy. So, you know, I think it's, it's a common question as to when should I use the periodic table on the MCAT? My answer to that is periodically. No, when you really should use it is when you are trying to figure out trends or atomic trends, and this can be in terms of electronegativities, this can be, ter- this can be in terms of atomic radii, this can be in terms of reactivity, a, a lot of different types of questions uh, can really get at periodic trends. You know, it might be, what is the order of electronegativity of this set of atoms that I'm showing you? Or it can be, what is the order of increasing radii of the following atoms? So you'll see a few questions um, where this applies on the MCAT. So the first thing to know is what groups and what periods are on the periodic table. So groups are the columns on the periodic table and periods are the rows on the periodic table. If you don't know what a column is, that's just going down, periods are rows and those are going across. And so groups, which again are going down, share physical and chemical properties. You know, for example, the very first group on the periodic table is the alkali earth metals. And they all react very violently with water. You can literally drop pure lithium, pure sodium, pure potassium into water, and you'll get these large, highly energetic reactions in which hydrogen gas is released. The next thing you'll want to know is where the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids are located on the periodic table. The metals essentially start at group one. It's important to remember, though, hydrogen is a nonmetal. So excluding hydrogen, you start at the first group, and you go over to the 12th group. That's the end of the D block. Um, And then you go over, you know, one or two atoms in most cases, and those are the metals. And this is not too hard to remember. The, The kind of boundary of the metals in terms of where they stop and where the metalloids start is at aluminum and then gallium, tin, and bismuth. So you can think everything um, to the left of those atoms is a metal, except for hydrogen. Don't forget that. The metalloids are between the nonmetals and the metals. This is boron, silicon, geranium, arsenic, um, and plutonium, among a few others. And just know that these have both the properties of metals and nonmetals. Lastly, you have the nonmetals. These make up the rest of the periodic table. You know, this is carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, everything to the right of the metalloids. Another important group to point out is the very last group on the periodic table. These are the noble gases. They're known for their inability to react. They are very unreactive gases. All right, let's talk about periodic trends. These are the most important thing to know, I think, in terms of the periodic table. So there are four different things to know here. Number one is atomic radius, electronegativity, electron affinity, and ionization energy. These are not too hard to remember. What you got to know is that electronegativity, electron affinity, and ionization energy all increase from left to right and down to up on the periodic table. That means that fluorine is the most electronegative atom and francium is the least electronegative, um, has the lowest electron affinity and the lowest ionization energy. On the other hand, atomic radius is a property that trends the opposite direction. So atomic radius increases from right to left and up to down, meaning that fluorine has the smallest atomic radius while francium has the largest atomic radius. Just an important aside, atomic radius changes with ionization states. 
So let's say that an atom loses an electron and becomes ionized. You know, take the example of sodium. So sodium likes to become plus one, therefore losing an electron um, to, come be, to become positively charged. So what happens is now you have the same amount of positive charge in the nucleus, but you lose an electron. So the radius actually goes down because now you have a larger effective charge that uh, pulls each of these electrons, right? Each of these electrons feels a little bit more of a positive charge um, because you essentially watered down the number of electrons in that atom. On the other hand, if you have something like chlorine that likes to gain one electron to become negatively charged, then you actually are increasing the atomic radius when this atom accepts an electron. All right, so that's a little bit on the periodic trends that you'll see on the MCAT. The big key here is that you need to be able to order different elements in terms of their atomic radii, their ionization energy, electronegativity, um, and everything. Those should be pretty easy, right? Easy to remember that the only trend that is increasing from right to left in uh, up to down is atomic radius. The other trends increase the opposite direction. Also, don't forget what a group and a period is. I've seen that a few times. You know, you might also see something like what kind of properties does this element have here? And, you know, the answers will be either metallic properties or non-metallic properties, and therefore you will need to know all right, are we talking about a metal? Are we talking about a non-metal? And so an easy way to do that is be able to tell on the periodic table where the metals are, the non-metals are, and where the metalloids are.